Well, good afternoon and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday, July 30th, the 17th week of Ordinary Time and the feast day of St. Peter Chrysologus. And he was a bishop, confessor, and doctor of the church. Uh, he was known for his theologically rich reflections, which is probably why he uh, was appointed and named Doctor of the Church by Pope Benedict the Thirteenth, um, but he was known for his theologically rich reflections that he delivered during his time as the Bishop of Ravenna, um, and also for this reason he is known as the Doctor of Homilies. So he's been a powerful preacher. We didn't have video and recording back then, so we can't really. Never will we know how he sounded and what he spoke and how he spoke, but it must have been pretty good. Anyway, that is St. Peter Chrysologus. Um, I didn't see where he's the patron saint of, but typically bishops of the church and doctors of the church are the patron saint of which they were appointed archbishop or bishop. So he's probably the patron saint of Ravenna in Italy. Anyway, today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead, and this is why mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, for John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of interested in where or why this is being written towards like the middle of Matthew's Gospels in chapter 14. Because it was under my understanding that John the Baptist was killed before Jesus began his ministry. Um, so yeah, just trying to see where the disconnect is. But also might just be the fact that it's written by four different writers, the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But we see that this is, well, it, this section is titled Herod's Opinion of Jesus, which is one of intimidation, clearly. Because you can sense that there was uh, some hesitation uh, in his decision to kill John the Baptist. Um, because Herod, King Herod, uh, heard about Jesus and thought that John the Baptist and Jesus were the same person. So, in a sense, the death of John the Baptist kind of saved Jesus for the time being to continue doing his ministry, um, which is why John the Baptist is known as the one that prepared the way for Jesus, um, which is also prayed in the canticle of Zechariah every morning in the office of readings, um, or sorry, morning prayer of the liturgy of the hours. Uh, but we can see here um, also kind of like the, this internal battle that the king Herod is having in order to, to kill John the Baptist. Um, and it's done through the request of the daughter who danced. And 
And then he can tell that he was worried about his own reputation um, of not disappointing the crowds, which is why he ultimately um, succumbed to the peer pressure of killing King Herod, or sorry, killing John the Baptist. Um, so I, I, can you imagine like what and how the world would react if this happened here in the States and it was publicized? Where they chop the a king chopped the head off of somebody, whether they were a holy person or not, and served it to somebody on a platter. We would definitely call for them to be insane. And it's unfortunate that like you know, we use that as like you know, a way to, you know, mental illness, which is real. Don't get me wrong. Um definitely. Uh, mental illness needs to be talked about more, but um, but like I wonder how everybody reacted to what King Herod did, um, and put like literally chopped somebody's head off and put it on a platter, and walked it up. Um, it's insane, um, and I just kind of wonder like what everybody else's reaction was who was at this party, you know. Um, but yeah, John the Baptist was a martyr in defense of the faith, you know. And that's what we're all called to do. In fact, this is happening in other countries um, right now as we speak, um, being martyred, you know, day after day after day. There is, especially in Africa, um, the Catholic Church, they are kidnapping and killing priests left and right, um, which is not very highly publicized um, at all. But then it's, it's been going on in China for centuries. Um, you know, that's where they have the underground church and like, yeah, just these dictatorships in Vietnam, it's the same thing. You can't practice Christianity um, and Catholicism at all. Um, and now we see this in Africa. Uh, and it's just slowly kind of working its way to the West, um, further West, uh, you know, in Europe. And then, of course, the States, like you can see it. Um, and it's very real. But this is a, a, what we are called to do is to continue to have faith and trust in, in, in God, um, knowing that our life is so temporary. Um, and our souls are forever, whether they go up or down, in the sense of heaven and hell. Um, so, you know, as we kind of go through today, uh, as I reflect and talk way too long today, is how much do we value other people's opinions? And how do we discern whose opinion of us we care about and whose we don't? And do we let it kind of affect our internal state and also our external decisions um, and what we do with our lives? So maybe just kind of do some reflection today on, on how and why you decide to value one's opinion over another. And then kind of discern if that's proper or not, virtuous or, disper or unvirtuous. So with all that being said, have a good day and God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit, again.